welcome to this lecture so in the early lecture i talk about infinite simultaneity transformation so here i will talk about the finite unitary transformation so to define finite unitary transformation start with the infinite simultaneity transformation for this consider infinite simul unity transformation u epsilon g i plus iota epsilon g now let us construct finite unity transformation mission by performing infinite simul transformation transformation in succession in steps of epsilon so if it is applied n times so if this infinite simultaneity transformation is applied means it is applied n times in succession in step of epsilon then finite step for unity transformation is defined as so let me define it let alpha is the finite step so it is n epsilon or in other words i can say that epsilon is equal to alpha upon n here n approaches to infinity so therefore let us define finite unity transformation as u alpha g is equal to limit n approaches to infinity it's a product of k varies from 1 to n so 1 plus iota alpha by n is g where alpha upon n is basically epsilon so it's a product of terms and times so that means if i expand this product so it can be written as limit n approaches to infinity 1 plus iota alpha by n into g into 1 plus iota uh, not 1 but it is i yeah i plus iota alpha by n g and this we have taken n times 
so that means this can be written as limit n approaches to infinity <coughs> i plus iota alpha upon n g whole this to power n and this can be written as limit n approaches to infinity 1 plus iota alpha g over n whole raised to power n. So let me remind something here. So as I know that limit x approaches to infinity 1 plus a over x raised to power x it can be written as e raised to power a. So keeping this in mind, what I can say that this limit is equivalent to exponential of iota alpha g because here this term is sitting in place of this a and n is sitting in place of this x. Right, so that's why I can express it as in this form. So that means this is a way that how we look at this uh, finite unity transformation in this form. So it can be expressed in this form. Also, let us discuss uh, some properties of uh, these finite unity transformations. So as if I consider e raised to power iota alpha g it's dagger so it can be written as e raised to power minus iota alpha g dagger but this g is herbesian so that means g dagger is equal to g so that means it can be written as e raised to power iota alpha g with negative sign or I can write down it as iota alpha g and whole raised to power minus. So this can be expressed in this form. So let me call it as u dagger. Right? So it is basically u inverse. So what I can conclude from here that u alpha G is equal to U inverse alpha G, right? So, if, sorry, dagger will be there. So, U alpha G dagger into U inverse alpha G, it is equal to identity. So, I can express now it in this form, right? So that means this is the property of unitary matrix. But this we have proof for uh, this finite unity transformation, right? So this is one property which it is satisfying. And let us consider another property. So to discuss that property, let us remind the formula that if we are having the operator and if I take the exponential of that operator and multiplied by another operator b and then e raised to power minus a so we are having such thing then this can be expanded in the following form this is standard formula I'm talk I'm not talking about this formula in detail so but uh, let me try to write down it So it is 1 by 3, it is B operator plus commutator of AB plus 1 by 2, then commutator of AB and its commutator with A, and so on, 1 by 3 factorial, and commutator of AB, then its commutator with A, and then its again commutator with A, and so on. So if I use this identity, So consider a prime can be written as u a u dagger or 
in terms of finite unity transformation, I can write down it in this form. So here, it is basically e raised to per iota alpha g a e raised to per minus iota alpha g because here g dagger is equal to g as it is a Hermitian operator. So now if I try to look at this form and this particular formula, then this result can be written as A operator plus iota alpha G A plus iota alpha whole square upon two factorial. It is G G A plus iota alpha cube over three factorial. It is G G G A. right and so on but here these higher order terms can be neglected or uh, sorry uh, not neglected but this is the form that how this can be written as now let us try to look at one thing that if g commute with A, then commutator of G A will be equal to zero. And then this A prime can be written as A, right? That means if, if I summarize the result, then I can say that if G A commutator is equal to zero, then A prime is equal to U alpha A operator into U alpha dagger E raised to per iota alpha G A E raised to per minus iota alpha G is simply equal to A operator, right? So this is all about the finite unitary transformation. Now, in the next lecture, I will talk about unitary operator for time translation, and then I will talk about unitary operator for the space translation. And thanks for watching this lecture.